will uh, call this meeting to order. If you would please call the roll. Chairman Wyckoff? Present. Commissioner Gavahi? Here. Commissioner Dillon? Here. Commissioner Noble? Here. Commissioner Connolly? Here. Commissioner Marr? Here. Commissioner LaRue? Here. All right, we got a full house. Thank you, everyone. So now is our time for public comment. Uh, I see no public, but I will make the announcement. If you'd like to <laughs> make a make public comment, you're welcome to do so. We ask you to reserve for th to reserve your comments for three minutes into topics that are not on tonight's agenda. Uh, if you do come up, want to say anything, give us your name and address for the record. Anyone? No one. Okay. Um, I'll need a motion for approval of May's minutes, please. I make a motion to approve May's minutes as written. Thank you. Second from anyone? I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. All right. All in favor of the motion to approve May's minutes, uh, we'll call the roll. Commissioner Dillon? Yes. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner Marr? Yes. Commissioner Noble? Yes. Commissioner LaRue? Yes. Commissioner Gavahi? Yes. Chairman Wyckoff? Yes. Thank you. The minutes are approved. So our next item up is uh, new business. And uh, we only have one item, it appears, of new business, and that is Ordinance 2024-08 regarding fences. Who Thank wants you. to start? I will start. Okay. Thank ordinance 2024-08, an ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending Division 3, landscape fences, gates, hedges, and walls of Article 6, supplementary district regulations of Chapter 110, zoning of the City's Land Development Code to revise the definition of building line, to add a provision for openings, to revise the provision related to open fences, to prohibit fences over three feet in intersection visibility triangles, to amend height, front, side, and rear yard requirements, to include a provision for fences around swimming pools, and to add a non-conforming fence, gate, hedge, or wall provision, providing for conflict, codification, and severability, and providing for an effective date. Very nice. Thank you. Who from our city would like to take the reins now? Hi, my name is Joe Petraglia. I've um, yep. been with the city a little less than a year. And if you recall last month's meeting, I discussed the fence code a little bit. Um, we also took it to the Board of Commissioners workshop before the last meeting. Uh, so we took the feedback from that meeting, feedback from this meeting, brought it to the city attorney, took feedback from them. Um, and then discuss it internally once more. And then here's our final draft. Okay. So starting on page 14. Uh, and the biggest change between this and what you guys saw last month is really just the, the non-conforming. That was a big topic that we talked about last time. And I'll show you how we address that shortly. And that is, so we addressed it in the building line definition. Instead of changing the non-conforming section of the fence code, what we did is we changed the building line definition to basically say, make it less restrictive. Say, so originally, we when we first discussed this, we talked about how the fence height would have to change based on the setback. Right now, just to remind everyone, it's based on the building line which non-conforming structures, it's different for every structure. And then we discussed changing it to the setback line of the primary structure, which would make it the same for everyone in that zoning district. But then there was the discussion about, well, if there's a non-conforming structure on the, a really small lot, then they wouldn't be able to get a fence as far as some of their neighbors. So we changed some of the verbiage here to say that it'll be the less restrictive of the, of the two whether that be the setback line of the building or if there's a house that's already built beyond that setback, then they can get their fence up to the house line. Um, so we felt like that was the best way to address that. And then also we added some verbiage. Well, then there's that issue if, if the neighbor's house goes a little farther than yours and it's also beyond the setback. So we address that also by saying the furthest vertical structural member of the primary structure 
on the subject property or the abutting neighbor's shared property line. So this is kind of a black and white answer and it's not, um, what's the word? It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of not left open to interpretation. Good, and, uh, okay. That's how we address the non-conforming. Like Continuing down, um, most everything else is the same from how we discussed last week, last month. Uh, the intersection, the uh, we t also another change. We, if you remember from last month, we had a number ten about temporary construction fencing. Uh, we decided not to add that in. The only thing we're adding in about con temporary construction fencing is going to be. Mm, where is it? In number two, we just add a little section about exempted that mm -hmm. it's yeah it's not going to be mentioned in this section and just to reiterate temporary construction fencing will be brought more in depth in a late different section of the code that's specifically going to be about temporary construction fencing um, that'll be brought in a later meeting so that the only thing we're talking about temporary construction fencing here is just saying that it's not going to be it's going to be exempt from this section of the code And just um, we do have uh, caveats in our code too about construction fencing required. Um, so that is still addressed in our code. Okay. And then continuing down, I'm on page 17 at the bottom uh, is the swimming pool fencing, which already exists. We haven't changed this from last month's meeting, but just to reiterate, um, it already exists in our code. We're just kind of bringing it here so that Whenever someone wants to build a fence, it's all black and white. Everything's all in the same section. When we lay out black and white, how if you have a property on the water and there is a swimming pool, you're technically not allowed to have a fence that's more than three feet. But if you have a swimming pool, there has to be a fence that's four feet. So this kind of lays out exactly what you need to do. And that's a, a four foot open fence or a hybrid with the top foot being open. And then finally, the non-conforming section that we're adding to the fence code. Uh, just to this hasn't also this also hasn't really changed much since last month's meeting. But the there's non-conforming sections in other sections of the code, but not in the fence code. And we just want to add a little blurb here to show that any new fences would have to meet this section of the co code. And and we have that definition codified elsewhere, right? On what requires a permit for the. What requires okay. a permit, that would be in 82-2. Uh, this is our definition section on what requires a permit. Okay. Um, so this would basically say that all fences would have to meet this code. If this wasn't here, then it's kind of a gray area. It would have to go to the regular non-conforming section, which technically means it wouldn't always have to meet the code, but this okay. kind of puts it black and white. And cool. I like it. Cool. That's everything I have. So our recommendation is to see if there was any other feedback from you guys. If not, uh, we recommend approval to bring it to the Board of Commissioners meeting. Excellent. Anything else to add from you guys? Other than I think um, with Jay, I mean, Joe coming on for the year now, I think he was really surprised about how hard uh, fence permitting was <laughs> and he made it a goal to get this corrected. <laughs> it looks like you did a heck of a job. Thank you. Yeah, everything's hard here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because it's you know we have so many non-conforming lots and all these little tiny things and it's same in treasure island um you know it just seems to be everything was here then we went okay let's make rules now and tried to lay that blanket over top of everything and you know we're trying to unwind all that and you guys are doing a great job thank you thank you so the temporary the temporary construction fence you're going to bring that back in front of us or you just okay because that we remember we talked about you were giving them a week to take it out Yes. After so, construction's over. So that's that's later. So that will be later in the special temporary construction fencing code. So we right. the two days, the two weeks, we just remove that completely from the Yeah, this makes fence. much more sense for a guy who just put in a fence with three permits. <laughs> yeah. We knew you'd appreciate it. <laughs> so I do one one thing and, and I'm not sure that the question will come up, but my little devious mind comes up with this. Um 
on page 14 where we have the, the big correction um, the addition of the furthest vertical structure member of the primary structure on subject property or the abutting neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. Does that need to say the abutting neighbor's property nearest to where the fence is? Because if, you know, some of our some of our homes are L-shaped and only one part is beyond the setback, does that allow them on both sides to go to that building so that, line? That's kind of why, our, why we put abutting neighbor's line. Okay. Originally, I, I put like a neighbor's line, but then it's like, oh, what about the other neighbor? Mm -hmm. um, so we felt that this was the most clear way to say okay. only the neighbor directly next to the one that with the shared property line. Okay. Cool. All right. I have a question for you. Commission members. Yeah, Mr. Connolly. Um, if you put up a block wall as a fence, your blocks are basically six inches wide. And if you want to stone face it both sides, you'd be out of the requirement, which says cannot be greater than six inches. So are, you are you looking at handling the, that? Are you looking at the open fence requirements? Where are you, where are you seeing the six inches? I'm on 45. Yeah, open fence. But I'm just mm -hmm. saying, if you built a block wall, which is six inches, and you wanted to face it, I mean decorative stone, you would be wider than six inches if you did both sides. Actually, block walls are eight inches. Well, you can get a six-inch block. Typically, they're eight-inch block. You guys have to fight it out. That's a construction block. block. <laughs> you're absolutely right. It's still wider. Yeah. Yeah, it's still wider. You just wouldn't be allowed to do it. According, according to the way it's written. That would be for that would be for open fences. I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm, I don't see anything about block walls. So the block walls would be limited, would be treated like a solid fence, mm -hmm. be limited to three feet in height, and it, the entirety of that would have to be located on your property. So that would be a solid fence, and we wouldn't, it wouldn't be hold. I'd have to, let me, re, I can revisit the verbiage here exactly, make sure we don't not allow for that, especially if it's three feet, it would be allowed mm -hmm. solid entirely on your property. And we definitely, you know, that would be reasonable if somebody wanted to do something like that. So we can make sure we have not done that. So if I go out of open mm -hmm. fences, let's see. It, it, I don't, I don't see anything the, that limits the size of the fence other than the open fence. Right. Yep. And wall the, means a non-bearing landscape wall. So it would I, go there and has no limitations there. That because it's not there. here. There's nothing, there's nothing in this about block. Where? Um, I have block three quarters solid. around my house. <laughs> Well, I mean, it says what it can be, the materials that the fence can be in walls, mm -hmm. traditional building materials, brick, stone, stucco over concrete, block finish, concrete, metal, vinyl, wood, natural, yep. stained or painted, composite products, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and then when you go to like rear yards, side yards, all fences, walls, like on side yards, all fences, hedges, and walls must not exceed six feet, so it's covered there, your wall. Um, front yards, again, it mentions walls, which would fall into what you're talking about, as does... The rear yards, I believe, reads the same as well. Yes, walls. So walls are covered in each front yard, side yard, and rear yard under 110-447. And so the walls would fall under there and would not have the limitation you're talking about. The only height, the only restriction is the solid three feet limited in the rear. Then the side yards can be six. And then that would be how we would interpret that. All right. Good catch. And and open open fences has a set definition and criteria in in the code that the uh, solid block fence wouldn't wouldn't meet well, fall under that category. Right. Good. Anybody else got anything? Motions. Anyone? <laughs> Who's up? I'm gonna have like a. A chip that I'll drop I, on somebody's I, table. I have a question. <laughs> yeah. So if we have two neighbors and their buildings, let's say, 10 feet apart, 10 feet from the property lines, and then your your fence would have to line up with the with the face of the building, right? And if both properties want to put fences up, then you have that distance in between that's hiatus. That's like 
you know, makes it look like it's no man's land. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, does that even make sense? You're saying distance in between the fences? If both between people wanted to fence, put uh, Yeah, the, the distances between the distance between the two fences, it just like, you know, just like a little alley that nobody can maintain. I guess they could come around the fence and mow it, but it just makes it like it doesn't make sense. So technically they could both put the fence against the property line and they could have back-to-back -back fences if they didn't want to work together and, mm -hmm. and share a fence that would be allowed. Uh, that's still allowed and that's not something that's being changed. Um, as for like a little alley, if they for some reason want to have a fence within their property lines, then I guess hypothetically there could be an alley with uh, in between the property lines. Uh, that's not something we've seen or foresee seeing. Uh, but if they, they both are able to put the fence along their property lines, so if they didn't want to work together and share a fence, then they could both hypothetically have their own fences back to back, yeah. if that answers your question. Yes. Thank you. And I, I will say when we do our permits, we, 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 we can do them with conditions. So if we catch that, we can put a condition in there that, you know, you've elected to stay two feet off your property, creating this vacant space, and you will be responsible for maintenance and care and stuff like that. So we're pretty good with adding conditions um, and catching things like that. Okay. Yep. Thanks. And if you share a fence, it can be on both properties, right? It can straddle the... Yep, it could be along the property line. There, I haven't seen a fence that isn't an encroachment in a long time. <laughs> in my... Fence guys are, you know, anyway, don't get it on the line all the time. So, um, but I don't, I haven't seen that where somebody would put, you know, miss it by that much, you know, and have a, have a weed row in the middle there, I guess. I, I, we haven't seen that around anywhere. No, it's not common. Okay. Sure. Possibly. Fair enough. All right. Any more or a motion? I make a motion to approve ordinance 2024-08. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. A second, please. I'll second it. All right. Mr. Noble with a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Commissioner Dillon? Yes. Commissioner Noble? Yes. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner Marr? Yes. Commissioner LaRue? Yes. Commissioner Gavahi? Yes. Chairman Wyckoff? Yes. That motion passed unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the presentation. And um, any other administrative or staff presentations before our next uh, adventure? Good. Okay. So number seven on the agenda is planning commission discussion. Under that, we have our Johns Pass Village Activity Center zoning workshop. Set so wants to start that. Okay, uh, I, I can uh, start that and, and clarify what, what's going on tonight. So after uh, doing the, the public workshops in, in April and, and getting uh, feedback from, from you guys, the board of commissioners and, and residents, um, and, and also we looked at um, the previous, like the uh, Dwani plan and a couple other activity, similar activity centers, like I, I, we looked at uh, uh, Dunedin's in there because it's, it's kind of similar in size and scale to what we would be proposing. Um, we developed, a, 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 it's a rough draft of an ordinance for uh, the, the, the land development regulations for the Johns Pass Village Activity Center. Um, basically, the like the participants from the public workshops, and this is what we kind of drafted into the ordinance was to protect the existing built environment and characteristics of the Johns Pass Village Activity Center and nearby neighborhoods, maintain height limits similar to existing built structures, but do not increase height limits to be as high as previously approved plan developments or variances, and focus on pedestrian friendly designs that enhance walkability. Um, Attached to the memo is, is the draft of the ordinance. Um, it's split up into different sections, like how, how our zoning is normally set up in our land development regulations. Kind of, kind of the, the, a difference though, um, 
we have uh, like maps and figures that, that would be included in the ordinance to show the character districts. Um, this was done uh, to make it easier to understand instead of trying to shoehorn the existing zoning that's down there over that land, it, it'd make more sense to just have the, like a, like a, like a sub map that has the character districts in it. So it's much easier for, for uh, property owners, residents to understand what, what can be done down there. Um, the sections are split up um, as principal uses, which is um, like primary uses that you could do with the property. Um, and each character district has its own allowed uses. Um, next is accessory uses. So, so each one has some of these were influenced by what was existing allowed in, in the, the categories, zoning categories down there. Um, we're still going to be uh, prohibiting drive throughs in, in the village like we, we currently do in, in our code. Um, under special exception uses, so that would be, um, it, you have to go through the special magistrate to do a special exception use, and it would have to be approved there. Um, so some of them are, are was from the previous zoning. Others, uh, one one thing that was kind of a unique thing down there is there are a couple of commercial buildings along the beach side of Gulf Boulevard, but just on the Gulf Boulevard side, not on the beach. So we did um, have a special exception use for certain commercial uses, but only fronting Gulf Boulevard because we don't want people doing restaurants and other uh, standalone restaurants next to people's single family homes because that wouldn't be right we don't we don't want that but there are some commercial structures where the people have had a tough time kind of figure out what to do with them because they, they're kind of stuck in almost like, like a illegal non-conforming use even though they're fronting gulf boulevard which is a ma major commercial corridor um but because they were zoned r3 it, it was kind of like like tough to really find a use for those property so and then there were vacant lots that that were um are currently vacant next to those commercial uh uses um let me just so next section is building site area requirements um lot sizes are pretty similar uh to what's currently in the, like the c1 c2 and r3 zoning districts um Yeah, so not much cha change with that. Uh, the setback requirements um, were, were based off of like feedback from, from those public workshops. And, and we did look at, at, at the uh, Duwani plan a bit on this. One thing we did notice when we were doing um, tours down of John's Pass with uh, the commissioners was that uh, on the boardwalk side, the, the the public right of way and the proper there's not really room between this where the curb is of the street and the property line compared to the other side where you you do have a very wide sidewalk so we on the boardwalk side we are requiring a 10 foot setback for, from from that curb um just because we want to make sure that when it, someone goes in and build like that there's enough room and it's pedestrian friendly because we don't want someone building a structure right up onto the curb of our public right of way because that that wouldn't be good and then it would just be kind of shadowing over the the street so we we did want a, a lit because elsewhere through there there's a there's a good amount the right of way is pretty wide and and the sidewalks are pretty wide but that area was kind of a tight area so we had had to uh, allow for a little more setback there just to the, 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 the make it uh, and it's still a reduction from what's currently required, but it it we we couldn't do the zero feet there because then it would just lead to structures being right up on the curb. Um, and then so the setbacks. An, another thing we did, um, and we we've heard this countless times that people don't like these square buildings. So what we did was we're going to require people to have the upper floors, and this varies between each character district have to be stepped back. So for example, in the commercial core. For floors above the second floor, they have to be stepped back 10 feet. Okay. So mm -hmm. the reason for doing that is so you don't get these big square buildings that are imposing over the streets. Because because you want because the thing is there are built like that that are have 
some like the parking garage, for example, is six floors, but the 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 part that's fronting the street is only two floors, and the garage part is set back. So and so you, you can't really see it because it's set back. So we so something like the Cambria, for example, wouldn't be able to be built down there because it wouldn't the upper floors aren't set back, for example. Um, I got a quick question here. So are there going to be six separate districts? Like they're not going to be C1s, R1s are going to be separate and basically titled Boardwalk, Commercial, commercial Core, and the area is going to be site specific. Correct. You're, you're going to have those character districts that will have the, the, the all those requirements because we want to make sure because um, each character district really has like unique like uses and other characteristics. So like, like it, that's the best way to do it. Um, well, and so on the zoning map, it would be a single color over it, but then in the ordinance, you'd have that sub map with the character districts. Um, and that was just the cleanest way to do it. We've seen other cities, that's how they, they do it when they have an activity center. Um, um, uh, Clearwater for their downtown area has it set up where um, they have a single color on their zoning map, but they have a character district map. So it was just, it was just the cleanest, easiest way to understand is trying to shoehorn the existing, it just, it just, we tried doing that and it just, it, 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 we, we want to make sure this is a clear, it, easy to understand process and not, and not try to confuse people. Um, okay. So yeah, the, yeah, the setback section is pretty long because there's a lot of different lot sizes and yeah. different kinds of structures. And I think that's kind of one of the, the unique things down there is, is you have all these different types of uses. So we've had to really kind of figure out, well, if you have an acre of land, you can do this with your property. But if you have like, I don't know, like 0.15 acres, this is what you can do. Um, so as you can see, like they can, it can vary on, on use and lot size. One thing we did try to do is the larger lot sizes. We we did try to require a little more setback, um, just 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 to make sure, especially on on the beach side, because we know there's kind of a mix between kind of the, there's some condominiums, there's some there's a hotel with Barefoot Beach Club, and then there's some single family and duplexes and stuff mixed in. So we want to make sure those like kind of multifamily condominiums and ho hotels and stuff like have enough setback from like the the other residential uses. Um, and then, and then the density stuff, that's the same as what's in, in the, that was in the special area plan and, and, and the land use change. So that, but we also have maps. So it shows, um, and, and shows what the densities are, uh, clearly, um, uh, the height, um, based on feedback. We, we tied it to the size of the lot because we didn't want people to try to max out and do tall, skinny buildings. One of the things we did do in the low intensity mixed use is it, it originally we were proposing 44 feet, but we reduced it to 34 based on, I guess, the context of it. But, but all the heights are tied to uh, like lot size. Um, the heights proposed, they're all significantly less than than stuff like like Barefoot Beach Club or Madeira Bay so we're not legalizing those heights like the max fight our height real it was is 50 55 feet um from design flood elevation to the eave line of the roof so that that would potentially be five stories of living space over one floor of parking it is a similar height to what was proposed in the Dwani plan in the R3 zoning district um, and we thought that was reasonable because Dwani, the Dwani, with the Dwani plan, they wanted to make it pedestrian friendly and they didn't want to have big, massive high rises. So we thought that was a reasonable compromise too. And also there are buildings down there like, like, uh, like uh, Madeira Norte and Beach Place that are the five stories over one floor of parking. And previously those were built to the, um, uh, before uh, the, the more recent zoning was adopted in the 80s, um, the height limit down there was uh, was 60 feet from grade, which ended up being back then five floors of living space over one floor of parking. Above the Eve line, 
it would would be like like so like if you have like a like architect architectural features because we know we know certain people they don't really like the flat roofs and we want to allow for some flexibility um what we don't want to allow and what we, what we're making sure to not allow um would be the someone try to sneak an extra floor above that like the the that area above the evil line that's supposed to be only for for access to like mechanical equipment and like 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 architectural features and have in you have like a kind of like a special like like roof so we we wanted to avoid trying to like because because what happens is if if we did like currently we have people that'll just max out and then they'll just do a flat roof which we, we and which a lot which doesn't look like a lot of the buildings down there so we wanted to allow for flexibility so we get kind of the the unique kind of buildings we want um down there uh so and then it explains further so we i did a map of the height limits and then we have the densities and intensities um so this is just more just what what's allowed, base, and this this it matches up with what was in the the special area plan. Um, so uh, one thing I, um, we did work on, um, and we'll definitely want feedback on our design standards and guidelines. So this kind of shows what we expect. So for example, we want to make sure that your mechanical equipment is shielded. We don't we don't want that stuff exposed. Like we want to make sure that stuff's hidden. Um, certain newer buildings do have that stuff hidden. Like there's a there's mixed use uh, building that's kind of a turquoise color that does have has the dumpster hidden. It has the AC units shielded. Um, and but that's when if you build a lot of the older buildings don't have that. So um, so basically the the next couple are design are design standards just similar to what currently exists um and, and basically any any anything new going in would need to meet these standards um but uh, i i hope that kind of this is just a draft version you guys aren't voting on it tonight uh we we, we would hope to to bring an actual ordinance version potentially in july or august depending we we have we we need we we still need forward Pinellas and to to look through it um, and give their blessing on it. So, but we wanted to get your feedback first before we send it off to forward Pinellas because it could take a couple of weeks for them to review it. Yeah. So I have a question on. Um all along Gulf Lane, as an example, which would be in the Johns Pass Resort District, or at least part of it is. Um, there are some smaller lots, um, and they're zoned. They're going to be zoned for eighteen units an acre. Um, but is are we still retaining the minimum lot size per unit type deal? Like you know, a single unit requires X number of square feet. Two units requires X number of square feet per unit. Yeah, we we have to just because so th those lot minimum size are, are are usually based off the density. Mm -hmm. So, um, fortunately, like that that we're kind of locked. I in. gotcha. So it's just it's you can just do the straight math off the density. Yeah, that that's how that's how it was okay. done. That makes it simple. Because I know it's elsewhere in some of our codes, there's density, but it seems like. Uh, where we ran into that duplex issue on 4th Street, right? Um, there was a duplex there. If he hadn't torn it down, he could rebuild a duplex, but it got torn down. Now a duplex can't go there. Um, yeah. You know, it's zoned for it because there wasn't enough land mass to accommodate the duplex. Yeah. And I, uh, in in my head, I'm trying to think of the math there. was. Would the math work out the same? I I mean, that's kind of the, the challenge. Okay. Um, on, honestly, our hands are tied with residential density. The county did does not and actually that's what killed the previous version of this back in the 2000s that so after the Dwani plan they passed a resolution and the consultants came up with a comprehensive plan ordinance for it and what happened is the state and county rejected it because they were it was going to increase residential density which was um um the state 
in, didn't want it back then. They still they don't want that now. We actually removed some residential density because there was still some on the boardwalk that we took away. Okay. Um. So like they they basically it was either keep it the same or take it all away. So we we kept it the, outside the boardwalk area. We kept it the same. So. Unfortunately, we're, our hands are kind of tied on that. Um, I, I know it's we we would like to allow have a little with the smaller lots. We did try to um, adjust some of the minimum lot sizes to, to try to give a little flexibility. Um, like uh, we we ended up with the building site area going really based off of. Um, we removed some of the, the the minimum lot size requirements, but it still has to meet the density. Um, I'd have to do the math on it um, to, to see how, how how much lot area you need per, per unit. Um, but uh, well, based we, on eighteen an acre, it's twenty four hundred twenty square feet. Yeah, per yeah, unit. that that sound that sounds right. So um, we did give a little more flexibility with that because because currently uh, usually the lot is like about four thousand. Because we wanted to allow for a little bit more, of the, the, so people could build kind of a, like smaller re residential things on those lots, so they can use them. Because because we want we want people to be able to use their property reasonably, but but we were limited on the on the on the density thing based based, based on uh, the 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 count, county county and states limitations related to that. Okay. And there is a process by which you can retain what you have if you're non conforming. Unfortunately, the example you gave, um, right, things right. got out of like, sequence. By scraping on that. it, yeah, yes. it erased that Correct. ability. Under yeah. yeah. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Sir. Um, so when we talk about density, are we, we're looking at residential and we're looking at overnight accommodation, right? Uh, correct. So, so what's the difference between density for overnight accommodation versus density for residential? Um, I let me just go to the uh, the that section. Um, yeah, and in this more or less matched what was so the buy right. Temporary lodging density um, varies by character district. As you know, I would like the boardwalk doesn't allow for any residential or temporary lodging density. Um, the buy right in the commercial core and Johns Pass Resort is 60, um, which is equal to what the commercial general category allowed before we had to uh, reduce it. And then the Johns Pass Resort, the previous maximum was 75 by right, so we reduced that to uh, 60. Um, we do have the county's alternative temporary lodging use standards, which requires the Board of Commissioners to adopt a development agreement, which ha has specific criteria in the countywide rules related to design, uh, mobility, um, and also with that one, you, you have to count the parking structure as part of the FAR as another restriction. Um, so, but these were all, this was all adopted with the, with the ordinance, the, the was 2023-01. So it just, it just matches what's in the special area plan, um, which during that vote, the board did reduce it um, for, for the max. So it, it was reduced compared to the ones you guys voted on. Is there a maximum unit area for overnight accommodation? Uh, we, we don't have a, a room size limit. We, we wanted to use FAR as that restriction. For residential and overnight accommodation? Yeah, what's well, kind of confusing compared to the other parts of the, so FAR is is all inclusive in the activity center. Uh, that was one, one thing the county uh, allowed us. So basically all, all the air conditioned space counts towards that FAR. Um, while in uh, other other areas, it might just only be for the commercial use of it, but for in in, in John's Pass, it's a, it's an all-inclusive FAR. So so if you're, let's say you're proposing something, it would have to meet the density and the FAR. All right, so, so the FAR and density, is FAR also the same for density as it is intense, as it is, um, FAR is uh, for overnight accommodation versus um, residential. 
it's it's the same except if it's the alternative temporary lodging use standards where it is slightly higher but you have to count the parking structure so there there are trade-offs with 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 a, going to, to the board and asking for that through a development agreement so but the max buy right is a 2 FAR but that's like an all inclusive so that's like all the air condition space so that uh, like if you did a mixed use building that that'd be all the air conditioned commercial and all the air conditioned residential condominiums or temporary lodging units whatever mixed use thing you're doing down there or or single use because there are areas that that people would be doing just single use like a small smaller multi family building what is the maximum stay for overnight? I'd have to check our condo hotel section. Um, I, I know we have some restrictions mentioned there. Um, um, let me let me explain the fear I have in general terms, and I think Marcia may agree with me, um, is that you, I, I know you have limiting, you have, you, have, you have created limitations for certain parts of it, but you could go and design for overnight accommodation to get more density and use it as residential. If, if we don't have a way of monitoring uh, the length of stay, then who's to say that, you know, one could go and design for higher, higher in, uh, intensity um, and density so so in our in our code i'm I'm just gonna pull up the condo hotel part because that does have the restrictions and then the county with the alternative temporary lodging use standards um prohibits converting it into residential units like it would violate the development sure. agreement if if that took place um but in our code currently and this would still affect um whatever gets adopted there okay So here's our requirements for condo hotels. Madeira, Madeira Bay, for example, is a condo hotel. A condo hotel means a hotel, motel, tourist, or seasonal accommodation room or group of rooms forming a separate habitable unit used or which could be used for living and sleeping by one family with independent kitchen facilities. Each unit shall be owned by an independent or, or by an individual corporation or any other legal entity having membership into an association comprised of all owners within the same development. No unit in a condo hotel shall be used as a timeshare or fractional ownership unit or be converted to a permanent non-tourist dwelling unit. That that I, I knew, <laughs> but uh, okay. I mean, I, I'm just explaining to you what my fear is as far as, you know, designing for overnight accommodation, but using it for residential, if there is no way to monitor. Um, and, and especially when it comes to overnight accommodation, you can build those units much, much bigger. Um, and, you, you know, then it becomes more conducive to overnight to, to uh, residential use. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they still have to meet the height limits are are pretty restrictive down there compared to other beach communities, and they still have to meet the height setbacks at FAR. Um, we just wanted to give some flexibility because they they we want to have like unique accommodations down there. We don't want like generic whatever like other places are 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 doing. So some people do like kind of the the units that are closer to being more like that have more amenities than others but um it still would have to look and feel like john's pass and and meet those, those height limits that are more restrictive than other beach communities have um we we could i mean we could add a reference to the condo hotel section 
I was I was going to pull up the county's requirements too that they would also have to meet that we do reference. Um, but that that's why we it's just we just didn't want to like we, we th felt like we had enough restrictions through the FAR and height and setbacks to uh, restrict and avoid allowing for too much. We don't have anything in the codes that restricts the length of time a non-owner can stay. I think it's three year. months. I, I've, it? I've seen it someplace that was three months, and um, but 90 days. That's what I had seen somewhere. Well, it says in the could be available to the 30. owner for use no more than 90 days within the calendar year. It will be available for lease to parties other than the owner in intervals of 30 days or less. Yeah, it's a, it looks like 30 days. Is okay, 30-day okay. thing. There we go. Yeah. Eat, but I think we're right. violating that and a lot because we have we have our northern visitors that come for three four months at a time. And the other question I had <clears throat> it has to do with height. Uh, DFE obviously we we measure the height from design flood elevation, but as you know at the ground level we can always build uh, retail as long as we flood proof the building. So we could get a bonus floor if we design it correctly. Um, so would you still measure everything from DFE, even if you put a ground floor retail? Uh, we, we would, um, cause you'll still lose some of it to parking. Um, but there are, uh, there, like there's a turquoise building where half of the, their ground is, is the flood proof retail while the other half is parking behind the structure and partially under the building. So. Um, Wouldn't the floor area ratio kick in then too? Yeah, yeah, it would be the the air condition, whatever air condition space there is, would, would be included in that. So that that would be another limiting factor. Uh, we do want some. We do want ground floor retail because we we want to make sure the the it's interactive at, at grade, so people are they're not just walking by like like parking garages and parking lots, and because because that John's Pass has that that ground floor retail, so we wanted to. And preserve and promote that. Um, but as, as I said, the height limits are, are much lower than a lot of other other places allow, and it's still less than what what we we uh, that our board approved with with Barefoot Beach Club a few years back. Because we get that um, residents they don't want super tall buildings, so um, the height the height limit we we did was is is pretty similar to what was allowed pre nineteen eighty three or or what was proposed in the Duani plan in in two thousand and two. Who um who has authority over design guidelines and standards, um, on by right development. So certain projects would have to come as a major site plan review, and that's a section of the code I think we we are looking to update and 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 change kind of what what projects would would need to come through because we want to make sure that like that that the community is getting input on 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 more projects. So so anything that's a major site plan review. So mo most most of the temporary temporary logging stuff coming through. Would would probably hit that hit that density uh, requirement or or most commercial uses anything small resident. Also, the other thing is by state statute, like single family homes, we're not allowed to like have design standards for them. It's it's a weird thing. I asked Ford Pinellas about, it and they were like, "Yeah, that's what it says." And I was like, "Wow, that's a I I wonder how that got <laughs> put into state law." But we got kind of but but we can definitely most of the like most. A good amount of the commercial or temp would coming would probably qualify as a major site plan review, which you guys would have to see. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like when we call it character districts, and then we don't have any codified authority over the character, what even the if character written, should be. Yeah. Like it feels like there should be more of a check. I know we don't have that elsewhere, and I know we've talked about different things that have come up before, where it's like, hey, can you? do this or do that. And it's always just a request and we don't have any real authority or, or over, Hey, actually, I know it says it's a guideline, but we kind of need you to do this or, or whatever. Um, I, I 
feel like it should be codified. This seems like the type of place where that would make sense because we want it to be a certain way. Um, yeah, especially in the commercial core, the boardwalk and the traditional village yeah. areas. The yeah. other ones, not so much maybe, but right. the ones that are really tight within John's Pass. But it, and, and it's one of those things where it's like, we can talk about FAR and density and intensity and that kind of creating a funnel of things, but ultimately that funnel is not going to capture every project. So it's kind of like, how do we do it in such a way that will capture projects that are not resi not residential, obviously, but could be um, scrutinized, I guess. I, I know eventually we do want to bring in a separate ordinance from this related to a site plan review, because we, we, we know that that is a, a big kind of concern to have, have more input related to that. I just pulled up our, our what it currently says in our code. So pretty much, I, I guess the challenge is a lot of this stuff that's either being built right now was approved years and years ago before a lot of you guys were on planning commission and it finally got underway or it, it's small enough where it didn't qualify to require the major site plan review. Um, but as of right now, anything like multifamily with more than 13 units or commercial or new construction over um, like, oh, that's for non-residential. So for commercial uses over 2000 square feet um, require the major site plan review. So I, I think most stuff that, that would be coming through would probably end up being a major site plan review for you guys. Uh, did you guys look through the design standards section? Cause it, cause it, it lists a lot of the requirements that, that are in our, that they would have to meet. And if they did come through the major site plan review, you would make sure that they're, they are meeting these guidelines. And then also in the setbacks, we did, we're not allowing that those big or, not, or the, the square brick or square buildings. So some of the ones that I, we've heard people complain about, they wouldn't be allowed to be built just, just based off of what's, what's in our, in being proposed in the code. Uh, so but, but yeah, um, if you want us to add or look to see if we get, we're allowed to add any, anything additional to these design standards and design guidelines, we're, I'm, I'm happy to take down notes and see if we're, we're allowed to do that. Just to, um, Unfortunately, the state preempts us on, on certain things, so I, I, I don't want to say, oh, yeah, you can do that, and then find out uh, state statute so says we can't. So, uh, but I, I would, I'm happy to take down and, and check to see if we're allowed to do that or not. Yeah, I mean, I just, to me, and if I'm not understanding this correctly, but, you know, the benefit of having um, development standards for a special district is that we can maybe implement some things that aren't, that are more restrictive than the code of ordinances, right? Like if we wanted to implement some something more of a strict like a more strict review process in this area versus what's codified here. Doesn't, the, isn't this a vehicle that we can do something like that? Obviously if it's within legal bounds. Yeah. I, I mean, it still has, I, I mean, I guess the challenge is if something comes through that meets these requirements, it, it meets the requirements. So, I mean, it, it is, it, it's important to have these things in the land development regulations adopted so when it comes through you guys, if it goes as a major site plan review, that you know that it has to meet these standards because you, you can't really like kind of pull additional that aren't in in here. Um, so, it, it, but as shown, we we do, will require um, any or some of these are guidelines, like, and some of them are requirements. Like, we want to make sure people have the dumpsters enclosed. And shielded from the public right of way because we know on some of the existing older buildings it isn't and it's not a good situation <laughs> um so anything new going in there won't have that issue luckily um but then we have suggestions like wood siding uh br um, brick or stone should remain unpainted um and roofs that are not flat should should be standing uh, um seam metal um because there's uh, some metal roof buildings a uh, second floor and above porches may pre 
retreat into the front setback and are encouraged to create a more pedestrian friendly environment because some some of the buildings do have the, the porches and the exterior lighting should enhance the old Floridian fishing village aesthetics such as caged and hooded metal lighting fixtures. So yeah, I, th I think you did a good job addressing that yeah. stuff, uh, you yeah. know, those design guidelines and it it does lay it out at the beginning of section D113 too, you know, should have some character to it, um, should conform the historical Floridian fishing village style, um, decorative elements, blah, blah. I mean, I think in the facade rhythms, I think that that does give rise to the ability for the city to say, hey, this isn't gonna fit here aesthetically because of this. And this this is in the will be in the codes. So I think it does give it a little bit of latitude for the city to say, now that, you know, you can't build just a box here and sell trinkets. Yeah, or so whatever. I guess that's my question though. Yeah. Like who and when does should <laughs> get enforced? You know what I mean? Like hmm. the standards are clear obviously, but saying it should look like a Floridian fishing village doesn't tell me it has to. I'm not saying that people would, and I'm not saying that, you know what I mean? Like the likely story is anyone building something there is going to try to make it fit the character. I mean, God forbid, but I just don't, you know, you, should, yeah. should is just I, hard. I, I, to I, I understand what you're saying. I, I, I totally get it. You know, we're, we're, we don't have a whole lot of projects to have like an architectural committee, you know, to oversee all this and review it. Clearwater has the same situation and the staff administers it. So the staff has that watchful eye to make sure that whatever is designed meets the intent of the code. So uh, I think the staff is charged to to look out for that. Yeah. And and we want to make sure because uh, we we get your concerns and it's kind of unfortunate uh, uh previous planning efforts didn't focus on on doing more of that especially in in town center but um or you, if you learn learn from kind of previous mistakes and and you try to uh, uh fix them so um i feel i definitely feel like uh like compared to previous efforts this like kind of really focused to look on on trying to reduce the risk of those mistakes happening again. But um, we'll have to bring in the, like a, like the site plan review thing would need to be a se separate ordinance. Um, but we, we could, I mean, if you want more things to be able to come through, like for example, it says 13 units, it qual makes it qualify as a major site plan review. We could obviously reduce that to a lower number so it triggers it sooner. Um, yeah. I well, I mean, I, I guess my thing is, as long as it's, yeah, th can be filtered and captured, that's fine. That's, I was just posing the question because it just seems like we got a lot of input and we got a lot of guidelines and, and standards and things that people want. And I'd hate for it to just like not be enforceable. You know, if, if the public wanted, hey, we want it to look like this and then, ultimately when someone comes to review it and it's like, well, yeah, you say should, but I don't, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, it's not entirely impossible. So I just, I agree completely. And another set of another seven sets of eyes on the stuff is very good of seven sets of residential eyes. And in terms of some of the stuff is it, it's excellent, but I think what we could maybe even do is, put this throughout the city, you know, so this is the guidelines for John's Pass Village. I mean, you know, and I think we should have some, some criteria also for the rest of the stuff in the rest of the city. And as I've gone through some of the magistrates hearings, I feel we should see things that gets approved by the magistrate. As an example, there was a five and a half foot offset on a property. So now they're going to have five and a half foot offset. So they're going to have a structure running to five and a half feet all along the edge of their property. The other side was six and a half feet. So, you know, and, and you guys do a good term, good job that you met in the middle of odd shaped lots. Well, I would say a good third of our properties are odd shaped lots. So, but to have somebody, you know, keep from these massive 
structures going in, you know, and, and this is residential. I mean, you know, but if you have a five and a half foot setback on one side, then the other residence gets a five and a half foot setback. So now we're the concrete jungle. I mean, you know, they're huge, huge buildings. And, and that's where I think Matt's trying to get a little bit of input. And I agree completely. I think there should be another set of eyes on these things. And if you could quantify it by if it goes in front of the magistrate or special circumstances, then it's got to come in front of the planning committee because we're planning for what the city's supposed to be. If I could, if I could jump in, oh, I think sure. I think we're having two, two conversations at no. once. So, and, and I know we want to have it because we wanted to have it last month. So we'll get to there. But to stay focused on this topic, I did want to point out, which I think is something you were looking for, on page thirty-six, um, section D one one three, the end of the first paragraph says that guidelines are recommended while standards are required. So there are certain things in here that are standards. So if it hits major site, um, it comes here you will have the power to say, you have to do that. You're right, some things are suggested and that's kind of the way it has to work and you kind of, kind of work with that. But there are some some definite guidelines in here um, that will help you do that. Yeah, yeah. one A through G are, are the standards. So these are like, it must meet these requirements. Um, the other thing we did to avoid that concrete jungle Thing on, on a side note. So for example, in the commercial core district for corner lots with a side yard along a street, the side setback along the street must be 10 feet. So no matter what, you're gonna have some space along a public right of way so you won't have a building right right up on, on a side street. So- uh, And you have the, the step backs for the multi-story as well. And that's yeah. not a- guideline that's a requirement yeah right? like so they, they have to like in that. commercial core if you're looking at this chart with the colors on it the last one under setback d under commercial core for multiple story buildings 10 foot minimum step back behind the primary facade of the building is required for stories above the second floor so you won't just get that massive wall right the giant wall so at least there's some stepping back and yeah. then the facade requirements for the rhythm of the facade and things. I, I, think so, it's, I think it's pretty fairly addressed. Yeah. So like something like, like, as I said, like the Cambria couldn't be built down in John's right. Pass. Like it just, it wouldn't meet these requirements. Yeah. I mean, short of having like a whole separate architectural review board or set of requirements, I, I think, I think it's done a pretty good job. Yeah. I mean, you can't, standardize everything right i mean we we're have not going to have a there's whole nothing standard here in our well, town <laughs> sure. part of the problem we have very little um, standard anything but i guess to that point and what we're talking about what's in this draft what is the next step on like opportunities to incorporate other things that we might find important like i know we're gonna this draft is going to forward pinellas and then kind of what's the next I, I mean, it would. I mean, it would come back for uh, public hearing, and we we'd have to advertise for for it. Um, but I I'd, I'd have to talk with Jenny about when she think. I mean, since it could take a couple of weeks for Fort Pinellas, it, it could potentially end up being more like August than than July. But um, I, I mean, I. I'm taking feedback now, tonight, and even you can email us and suggest things. Just, um, but what? It, until it, until you guys actually vote on it and 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 pass it at a public hearing to go to the board, you guys still have opportunity to give feedback and change things in it. So. As of right now, it's just a discussion item in, in rough draft form. So you, know, you guys don't have to worry about voting on anything tonight. So, right. you, so you have time to, to kind of digest it more if, if you need to also. Yeah, there's a lot here for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, it's pretty in, intense. So that would be all of 7A that's in the packet. All of those things are, are kind of penciled in, and we're going to <clears throat> excuse me go through these and give you more input next month. I guess, and then you're going to present it to Pinellas County. 
No, no I, I mean, they don't have, they only have to review it to make sure it meets the countywide rules. They don't have to vote on anything with it because this is our land development regulation. This is like local. It's just more of a, a ni nice, nice thing to do. Just make sure it meets the countywide rules. They're happy with it. We get their, their, blessing just just because sometimes previously the city didn't go to four so we but we've been much better about doing that now to make sure that they're good and happy with any anything we do related to for planning and zoning so well would it make sense to present this like it is and then let them script it up and say no this isn't acceptable this isn't acceptable i mean you're I, and i'm just asking yeah. you know, in terms of it's it seems pretty good to me. I mean, you know, as I read through it and seeing everything, it it's it's everything that we really I believe that we've looked for. And you guys have gotten together with the you know uh, all the uh, meetings that were held, and you've got all the feedback, and you made it concise and 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 pretty good. So. You know, I, so you know, forward Pinellas is really only interested in density intensity. Yeah, and, and the rest yeah. is up to this community right here. Yep. Yeah, because yeah, they'll just check density intensity and 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 maybe uses, but mostly density intensity. That's that's what they care about. Yeah. But, um. So it, it really is up to the community. Um. And an another thing as a side process that's going on is. We're going to have uh, our first workshop for the master plan later in the month, um, and we'll be advertising for that uh, shortly. That would be more likely to impact the rest of the city and have uh, uh, suggestions of what would we, we would later do in separate ordinances and revise our L LDRs, because we, we would like to have other standards in different parts of the city, but I guess the challenge is we want to do all these things, but then we have to do all the we have to do all these ordinances to do those things. So it ends up being like we only can do one thing at, or one or a couple things at a time. But usually, like a thing like this, this this takes up a lot of time. So until this like passes, it's tough to like go on to like the next stuff and 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 bring out for other zoning districts and and I, and I think the master plan because uh, Kimley Horn has had a lot of experience with like design standards and guidelines for like for communities. So I think what they, they, they suggest and like will, will probably be, be pretty good stuff that we'll be able to eventually bring as a uh, ordinance for L, uh, update our LDRs. But um, I, I agree. I, I would like to have standards in other parts of the city also. Um, but unfortunately this order is just focused on John's past. So um all right. And with the planning commission, we can always make suggestions when the plans come before us. Like I remember when the barefoot beach resort came before the planning commission, we worked with them. They brought the plans. The community was involved and they wanted the parking lot South side moved over the building because the residents are right there. Yeah. So it's just parking. But as the planning commission, we made a motion, we'll accept the plans. And part of the motion was, we know you have a seawall, but we still want you to put sea oats out back there. And then, okay, so the motion passed, it went to the board, the board just dropped it. The commissioners didn't vote on that, didn't make them do it. So that's where we're limited here with what we can, we can make the suggestions, but we're appointed, we're not elected. And the the ultimate decision is up to them. Like, right. if you have the seawall, you don't need sea oats, uh -huh. and they just doesn't make sense to yeah. me. I think we should have sea oats up and down the beach, unless it's a beach access, and yeah. that protects the whole community. But we never seem to get anywhere with that. But we worked with them, and the barefoot beach people worked with us, and it finally, you know, they got it done. All right. Anyone else have anything else? Any other discussion on the village? Good. All right. Um, we have one more item on our penciled into our agenda. Mr. Conley had something, please, sir. Hi, everybody. Um, you've heard me talk about this before, about us getting more power <laughs> and having a decision just like 
what Mr. LaRue was just saying. Um, now that we have everybody here, we can basically kind of get a feeling and get a some kind of consensus of what everybody thinks. Um, and what I mean by more power, more chew, is just like what Michael just said, that it went upstairs, the commissioners, and they didn't hold their feet to the fire to plant the sea outs. Um, I'd like to try to make something that where we had a final decision on a lot of this, of where all of this is going, because it's all gonna come through here. And if we don't have some kind of say that it's just gonna end up like you're not gonna wanna see that. So <laughs> you're smiling uh, <laughs> because you know I'm right. So, so um, I don't know how to do this, how to change the, what we don't have to what we could have. So that's why I'm asking all of you, how do you feel about this? Can I jump in before? Please, I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you yes. to jump in, so, so go ahead. Trying to figure out how to start it. So it depends on what you want, what you want. If you're looking for, um, we want wording in the code that we can say, the planning commission can, it won't even, that wouldn't even work. You want wording in the code that says you have to have the sea oats, which I think what your example was, you could have a seawall or a sea oats. They chose a seawall. You guys said, well, we'd like you to have sea oats too. And they said, oh, okay. Well, my guess is I had nothing to do with it. The commission went, we can't require that because the code doesn't require them to do both. So part of it is what's in your code, which is like what you're seeing today. There's a change in the code. They bring it to you guys for your input. When it becomes part of the code, then you can hold someone accountable to the, those standards. So that's one thing is changing the code or recommending changes come be made to the code that you can force those requirements that you want. The other thing I think I've heard you talk about is you wanted to see more. Okay, and to see more, I think um, Andrew mentioned earlier, they're thinking about bringing the site, major site plan or some, something back to, to look at that. So maybe there will be more stuff that comes through. That'll be a discussion that might bring more before you. Um, but again, even if it comes before you, if your code doesn't require what you think it should require, the first kind so they're kind of two conversations, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not telling, and of course, ultimately it's gonna be up to the commission what they grant or don't grant, either more review power. And I don't I don't know what other process they would want you to review other than major site plans. Um, you definitely don't want to be here every day, all day, sitting in, <laughs> sitting with them downstairs, reviewing right. everything, right? You don't want to go that extreme. Um, so I think that's why the division is there, that the major, major site plans need to be looked at. And that's why they come to you. Now, whether it's decided that those standards should be lessened. So you see more that conversation. It sounds like you're going to have when they are ready to present that to you. Yep. Yeah. It has um, to be a separate ordinance from yeah. this. And it's important yeah. to remember, remember that like getting this ordinance done, the John's pass would mean that you'd have more projects coming through that, that might hit that, that major like site plan threshold. Cause it is, that's what I, I mean. Like, pretty much anything non-residential that's like over 2000 square feet, a building area or, and it has like more than 21 parking spaces would come through for you guys. So if someone did a small boutique hotel with a ground floor restaurant or something in John's pass, that would, you guys would have to review it and it would have like a neighborhood meeting also. So even as of right now, if you, if this, the, our board adopted eventually when they adopt, whatever zoning ordinance, it, this is already in our code. So you, you guys would end up seeing it anyways. I, I guess the thing is there's projects that were kind of on the borderline that were under the threshold, but like, like for example, like there's a, someone building a, a like a single family home down, down on Pelican that most likely will be used for vacation rentals, but it is, it is a one unit, but it is a nine bedroom home. It's a big house, but it is just one unit. 
So I, th I think one yeah, of the things to your point that's important is to understand what our scope is yeah. defined in the code. But I think Mr. Connolly is saying we should maybe look at the code to expand that scope. Is that what you're right. saying? Okay. As it stands now, we have a certain box that we fit in and understanding our authority is just recommendation. And that's as far as we go, which, you know, whatever, fine by me, but um, that's, that's the, that's the chair we sit in at this point, just to say, I think our position is to be a representative of the citizens and using our, as residents, using our knowledge of the town and our, you know, representing the, our neighbors to say, this is what we think is the best to send that upstairs for the actual vote. Cause we really don't have that authority. And I don't know where or how, if anything, any of that authority or that scope changes without massive changes to the code. And I think we would be probably get a lot of pushback. Yeah. Well, we're we're like the first filter. Yeah. It, it comes to us first. And I don't know if anybody's been on the board. I was for some of these big projects, but there were some angry people out there yeah. on what we're deciding to do. And they're voicing their opinion and we're listening to them. And we're still making our recommendations and uh you know some people got ugly out there you yeah. know out, outside of here too and it's like well we always we have the luxury of saying we don't get to vote on it well that that's well that's <laughs> that's what i was the don't wrap up point was i've said many times we're appointed you gotta you know the elected people are the ones that are making yeah. the decision and i think that's where our role as a planning commission is different because we are appointed and not elected and the elected guys and girls are the ones who ultimately have to make the choices because they are chosen by the votes. I, I think with this new, what's being proposed, we are gonna see more things because the threshold for becoming a major project has been lessened, right? Well, it, that's what's in our code currently. There just hasn't been much proposed down in John's Pass because of the land use and zoning and compatibility mm -hmm. issues. But once the once this changes, we probably will see more. Yeah. Once the Johns Pass activity zone, if it were to pass and be accept be adopted, we probably would, would see more things because it's going to open up some other opportunities that then fall within this major redevelopment category. Yeah. Um, Did you ever see Jeff's plans on Pelican Lane? Well, I did. Yeah, but oh, not, you not did, this because you're a real yeah, but. It's one unit, though. That's what I'm. Yeah, that's the thing. It's only one saying, unit. We yeah. never, we never even saw that. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm basically saying. Yeah, that was like, all by right. So he. Okay. And and, and state preempts us on single family on. on yeah. Last so. workshop, I had a gentleman talk to me on the way out, and he said to me, "The old veterans, uh, uh, the dog hospital, yeah, is getting a four-story building," and he said. Do you know anything about it? I have nothing. No, no, no. Actually, that actually is so, going to be coming so, from. So you what's guys. happening is that will come that, that's coming before you guys. You'll see that. Yeah, that yep. did trigger. It just it bare it hit the major site plan review threshold barely, okay. but it, <laughs> it hit it. That's not all right. I understand that's gonna come, but there's other things that are have been done that we never even saw. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's what so where's the planning? Well, you know, the, I mean, technically, like, the planning's been done right by well, by the codes that we have, and the example of that one on Pelican Lane. I don't think anybody's more affected by that than me personally. Yeah, you sitting Michael. here because I'm looking right, right at it, um, and there's really nothing that there's nothing really that could be changed because of the preemption yeah. from Pinellas County because it is technically a single family home. And there's nothing that the yeah. planning board can do to modify that. We are we are actually reduce proposing to reduce the height a little bit. Right now it is 44 feet from DFE because it, it's zoned R3. So we are proposing to reduce it to 34 feet from DFE to the Eve line. So any anything new that gets built there, like basically the living space would be within that 34 feet, and then whatever architectural features on the roof or or AC units or whatever. Would, would could be above that 30 with but no living space above that so right. we we are actually proposing to reduce it a little bit to kind of keep that uh contained um with that one that it is i think it is just rooftop access on that which is within that 
threshold, but we wanted we wanted to make sure to and and also I think we did require let me pull up the step back requirements because I, I think we did we're our, we are gonna start requiring proposing to require step backs actually. Yeah. So for a multi-story building, a 10 foot minimum, and this is in the low intensity mixed use where that building is currently being built. What we have proposed is for, mul for multiple story buildings, a 10 foot minimum step back behind the primary facade of the building shall be required for floors above the third floor for portions of a building facing or bordering a public right of way. So, so, so yeah, there's standards and there's codes and there's, that right for against by right development and by right which i think is good that is a good thing um you know they can they can build what they want to build what i do here is the consistent word is recommendation i think like that's the power that we have is the power of recommendation so to me, but it also sounds like there's a little bit of an interest or a lot of bit of an interest in a like, I don't want to say architectural review board because I just think sometimes maybe that's <laughs> a lot, but there's an interest in something adjacent to that, right? Um, is there a vehicle? Is the do we have a vehicle on the behalf of the public to recommend that there is a discussion about the development of that? And if it were to fall into, you know what I mean? Like actually have a discussion with the public about that in this kind of setting, or is that reserved to like the commissioner meeting only? Because it sounds like if it's like an idea that we're having, because we keep running into it, because we're here and the public isn't necessarily here all the time and we feel like it's important yet we still have to get public input you know is there a way to say hey you know we we'd like to recommend like a formalized discussion on an agenda with the public's involvement about you know proposing that kind of vehicle or ordinance to the commissioners is that something that can happen I a lot can happen, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think I finally, I think towards the end, I finally, I finally yeah. caught on. So, so a lot can happen, whether it will or not, of course, is a different conversation. But I, so I think what you're asking is if there's a way for the planning commission to make, can make, to make an agenda item about this conversation. So the public knows you're going to have it so they can come and say, yes, we agree. We don't agree. And this is what we think your problem still, the starting point still is you have the authority granted to you by the commission, right? It, they need, they need depending on what, what you're looking for, either your code has to change to give you specific requirements that you can hold people to that come before you, like, like some of the requirements and what you saw today. So it's still a code change, which would be ordinance, public meetings, you ultimately the commission, all that same, pro same process. If you're looking for whether it somehow to give you, I don't want to use power, but that you would review more items or that you would see more items, it's going to depend. It's first of all, the commission is going to have to prove it. The the um, um, items that were mentioned, I think Chuck mentioned them about um, the special magistrate. You guys aren't going to see those. Those are variances. Those are special exceptions. Those are not for a planning commission, a, a planning board. By law, they're going somewhere else. That's why you're not going to see those. Um, you can go see them, but you're not going to hear them. Now, sometimes those things will come together. Well, and you may... how, about, how about afterwards? See, and I'm not looking, you know, in terms of, oh, okay, so if if there's a variance done, mm -hmm. that's when it could trigger that, okay, so the variance is going to be done and approved and all of that. So could we then see what is being proposed from the variance if if it qualifies it as a major right. yeah if it triggers a major site plan review like the uh sanderling does you guys will see it yeah so again it's just as of right now it's the way your code is written um so that's that, that's where you have to go so i don't 
So the, the easy answer to your question is if the city manager wants to put it as an agenda item, it can be an agenda item and there can be a discussion, right? But where the where that first discussion should happen is here, is it with the, the commission? That's for them to kind of figure out. Uh, I think the first question might be, and I don't know, I, I, this is chicken or the egg, right? We're kind of like, where do we go first? Does the commission want to have this conversation? Which would probably be the first thing the city manager is going to have to yeah, We're out. not in a position to define our scope. No, you can't define your scope. You can't demand that the commission define your scope. Um, there, there's limits to what you can do, but there's also um, language that you serve at the pleasure of the commission. And sometimes they can give you more than what you have right now, depending on what they're asking you to do. So, um, you know, obviously we talked about if the requirements for what triggers a site, a major site, site, yeah, you know, <laughs> that that all of a sudden now you guys are going to say, man, you have us here all night. If we're too busy, right? But <laughs> there are things that you could do um, should the commission want to that does trigger um, more things coming before you possibly. Um, but it doesn't, you're never going to see everything. And that's just the way it's going to, I mean, that's just the way it is in any city. I don't want to see everything. So yeah. It sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like in summary, this is a conversation that I think some of us would like to have. Yes in the city yet that conversation has to either come from you know that topic has to either come from the city manager which probably not going to happen and then or from the board of commissioners right it has to be said hey we want this to take place which is not something that we can do so um i think it would be nice to be the vehicle to be the vehicle for that conversation just because we're the ones that see these things come across and to be involved in that and to have the public and everyone here talking about it would be great. But it sounds like we can't really, it's not really a conversation we're really allowed to have unless it's kind of told to us, Hey, we want you to have it. Right. I mean, is that, is that essentially what I, I'm, I think at this point you ha it needs to become an agenda item. And I, 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 we don't create apologize. Agenda. You don't create the agenda. Does the city manager control the agenda? Do you guys? Uh, the board board does. The board does. And I guess the city manager. For for what it's worth, though, the the current board and our current city manager uh, ha have been uh, pr pretty um, like I, compared to previous boards. They had like they're not. They they've been much more closely looking at new development compared to other boards that were very pro developed this one is is the, they're they're much more um willing to um work so, um listen to the residents concerns and 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 put the residents first versus putting the developer first so i i, I feel at least as of right now i i wouldn't be uh is because of our current board or being being very excessively pro development um but i it's usually either the board brings it up or the city manager like a, like it come up at a boc workshop um but i i know we do want to look at uh, updating our site the site plan review section as a separate ordinance and then and then potentially updating our uh, the, the the pd section um to to change change um some things in it um What's interesting is in the Dwani plan actually proposed the plan development idea, but it had set um, standards related to like, like setbacks, height limits. And for some reason, the part of it they adopted was the plan development, but not as much about the height limits and setbacks. Because as I said, the max height in the Dwani plan proposed was was at five stories over one floor of parking on, on the on, on in the R3 zoning. Um, so which the PD doesn't, uh, or in its current form, doesn't really reference, uh, height, height limits, more references, other things of similar size and scale, but, um, I'll have to talk, uh, Jenny is currently out of town. So I, I, I kind of get the gist of it. You guys want more input when, when we, we have, have new development in the city. Um, that's maybe it's also something to bring up to the board of commissioners yes. during the public remarks, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Any, yeah. any one of anybody, us as residents can, a, can get up yes. there and say, hey, yeah. this is, we're, we're serving this capacity. Yeah. No. Here's an idea that was discussed. Yeah, and absolutely. just for your deliberation, then they maybe workshop it. And, mm -hmm. you know. and I, I was going to say also, as Andrews can I'll let Jenny know, I'll let Tom Trask know that this conversation happened and if they have any different ideas about a method to bring that conversation forward. 
we will get back to you. But my, I think, I think this is kind of it. Like you have public comment might help. Yeah. City manager knowing about the issue would help. Um, yeah. But here collectively, yeah, I, there's not I, much you I can do except to say we, we like all agree. Yeah, yeah, we all agree we would like to change something. Understanding there's kind of different avenues. If you're looking for specific teeth in your code, that's one way. You want to review more, that's a different thing. You want both, that's fine. But understand there's different different avenues to get where you're going. Um, and it's just finding a way there should the commission want you to do either of those yeah. things. And but, I think basically what I'm trying to say is once the building, the new building gets done on Pelican Lane by you guys, I understand it's going to be, you know, he's going to put some schmaltz in it, you know, whatever. So once that's finished, and we've already basically seen Carnes is building the new restaurant, the front part of it on John's Pass is fantastic. The backside is terrible because that's where 80% of the people are going to drive up to. That is what they're going to see. They're going to see a backside of a building. Now, if you go down Pelican Lane, the backside of Pelican Lane is horrible. The front side is fabulous. That's where the tourists are. Okay. But what I'm getting at is once Jeff's building gets done and it meets our criteria that we want to basically kind of keep that throughout the whole activity center. In other words, that kind of look, that kind of finish and let everybody try to outdo each other. So we have a, a fantastic looking community down there. Yeah. And I think, I think the thing is, is, this becomes the natural forum for this conversation, but unfortunately it always is like you, you get the, the PD shows up and it's like, you're behind the curve. Cause it's like, well, we're here, we're here to get approved or whatever, or recommendation for approval. Um, so it's just a little, it's like, I think we keep having this conversation cause it's like every single time one of these comes in, we're like, wait, why didn't we see this before? And I think, but I, I think based on the authority that has been defined and it sounds like we should, if, if we really want that, we as citizens, not just board members, probably need to start asking questions like, can we have this conversation? Can this become a real item? Yeah. Because we keep we keep running into it. And this is like the natural place where it gets run into the most. Yeah. Right. And, so, and I mean, I, I would be in favor of like, you know, reaching out and trying to see if we can get that combo started. Well, I think also John had the kind of question, is everybody willing here of the seven of us to be taking on more things? Correct. You know, because like if there's only two or three of us that are willing to do that, then we, you know. Vacate it. Yeah. So. Don't look at me. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think. <laughs> If there's I limits to everything right I, it's more of yeah yeah but that's where the conversation comes into play because maybe someone in the public has a really good idea as to how to handle it and maybe it becomes a totally separate entity i mean mm -hmm. who, who knows i um i don't think it necessarily has to happen here um but i on the concept of that kind of review process happening, I would I would be generally in favor of something like that. Makes like, sense. You know, yeah. so and you have something personally. Yeah, I mean, and just want to say, you know, on behalf of me, um, city staff, I have no objections bringing as much in front of you guys as you're willing to see and weigh in on. I, I love to have more sets of eyes on stuff, especially as we get into more trickier things that come up or stuff you just would. So for city staff, you know, we would understand if things go that way and be supportive of, you know, being more inclusive. Um, and we do have very savvy land use attorneys who know when they're submitting with a developer what they're required to do 
and what they're not. So if we were to say, you know, geez, our planning commission would really love to see this sooner, they'd be like, mm, we don't have to do that. And so, <laughs> you know, it, it, as much as we would love to sometimes throw it to you guys a little sooner so that you don't feel blindsided. Um, it, we rec I, I personally recognize the time that you guys are putting in and I appreciate it. We get some really good feedback. So I completely understand why you would want more teeth and your voice to go a little further. So I just want you guys to know from, from my perspective, um, I absolutely know what you're going for. Um, and figuring out how to get there through our ordinances and through all the proper channels is probably the hurdle we're up against. But I, I hear you and I know why you want it and what you want. So, right. and cool. Yeah. Good. Mr. Yeah. Connolly, that satisfy your yeah. um, desire for the moment anyway? And get, get the conversation started. I think it's good stuff. Good. And all make, right. Make sure um, to be well, involved you, with the. How do you all feel about it? I think we're all in agreement that we'd like to be involved as much as we can and, and within the scope that we're permitted, right? And if that scope needs to be changed by some other authority, maybe that's where we start, you know, okay. bring that to the city commission and let them workshop it and see where they want to go with it, whether it requires another board of some variety, I don't know, or if it puts more on our plate, then so be it. Yep. Yeah. And, and cool. I've got something back to the village in terms of uh, is property owned from the property line to the CCCL and can anything be built? And I'm going back to, uh, let's see here. Uh, you, yeah. you can definitely own past the CCCL, but well, the restriction on what you can do with it. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, and that's what there's quite a few of the properties right there on the water. I mean, you know, and as we're losing some of the water beach rights, does something need to be defined? You know, and basically I'm trying to, I'm not sure if it's in the transitional area or it's the um, transitional and John's Pass Resort. I think it's a transitional. No, it's actually John's Pass. You've got all these houses that own property beyond the CCC. CCCL line. So can they build to their property line or is it just to the CCCL line? They, they can't build beyond the co uh, county coastal control line. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and, and, and I, I understand, you know, you say that, but is there anywhere that it's written that's you know, a federal going, going beyond the That's a federal thing. If, if I may, um, any any construction water wards of CCC line would have to be approved by DEP. Yep, correct. DEP. FDEP. Yeah, well, my, my, my protection. Yeah. Um, case in point would be Moby mats. For instance, we have done a few Moby mats along the beaches, and anything water wards of coastal construction cost, construction control line, you'd have to. <laughs> You can just say the line. We'll know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tongue twister. It's a mouthful. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, we, there are, you know, and we're seeing it, the articles going around next door and whatever, the posts about Reddington where people are saying you can't be on my beach because I own up to the high water mark. Well, you obviously can't build anything out there. You, your lot line may be described as going out to the high water mark well beyond the line, but yeah. you can't do anything with it. You can't build anything, any permanent structure beyond that line. Yeah. Preservation. Right. Yeah, there might might and that be. line moves. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Th and that's not a static line either. It it the uh, DEP can decide they want to move it landward, and then what's in there can stay. But if it has to be replaced, it's moved it's a couple moved times. Back. Yeah, yeah. During my lifetime. Yeah. yeah so and uh, there might be some non-conforming stuff that that might be built over it, but that wouldn't be allowed if it had to be rebuilt. So. Um, keep, keep that if it, in mind, like if you see something that it might just be like a legally non-conforming use, but if it had to be rebuilt, they wouldn't be allowed to do that again. So. Okay. Um, that hit what you wanted. Yep. Now, who she brought us some pictures. Yes. Yep. So, are we allowed to just add stuff without it being on the agenda? So it's not posted or we, if it's just discussion, I don't want to get us in trouble. So I could no, yeah. So 
it kind of, yeah, yes, you can. Talk I mean, there's about nothing it. we're yeah. voting on or anything. You, you can talk about stuff that's not on the agenda, but yeah. the, the question then becomes if you want to, and I don't know what it is, so I'll, I'll start that that's not going to affect what I'm saying. I'm not sure what it is either. The idea is the agenda. The point of it is to let the public know what you're going to talk about so right. they can be part of that discussion and have their three minutes or more to, to, to talk with you about that topic. So if it's something that you think would be better off being an agenda item, you could move it and ask it to be an agenda item. Again, I'm not I'm not sure if I'm assuming it's the city manager that controls that. Who, yep. Whoever well, controls that, it's not me. <laughs> sure. Um, and that that's way, what I'm trying to be sensitive to. Yeah. I don't want to overstep right. our bounds. So it's and, not wrong, but sometimes there's certain things you really want to make sure the public sure. knows. You're about How about like a about. high level of what this is about, and really then we'll so decide from there. It, it is. I mean, this is not. This is. If I can really, really jump in on this one, because we went through this before, and when Linda was here, we voted as the planning commission. Mm -hmm that we wouldn't bring anything day of. You would send an email to Linda and then she would approve it and put it on the agenda so that we know what's coming. And we're not just looking at a piece of paper sitting here going, what is this for? And then we have, you know, we didn't, couldn't research. So we kind of voted on it before and the planning commission voted that that's the way we would handle these. So that way we would know and not just be here for hours talking about whatever topic and then another one and it just keeps rambling on. How about you give us a minute or two synopsis of what we're going to talk about at the next meeting? Really, it just recommends <laughs> to put some like truncated domes in John's Pass. That's all it is. That's that's all that is. And this is for access? Yes, uh, ADA accessibility. A yeah, just just, uh, just a note, uh, for instance, there's a handicap sign that doesn't, doesn't meet code and there aren't really any truncated domes at, at ramps. So it's just basically bringing a little bit of attention that maybe we should take a look and um, put some truncated domes in some areas. It's nothing big. So this is more informational for yeah, we, we don't enforcement make... or for planning department to look into? You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know that's within our scope, right? Um, good information and I'm totally on board with, you know, making it the pass as acceptable John as possible. John made me do it. Might, yeah. Might, yeah, might need to talk with public works. Why am I not surprised? Um, yeah, we can get with, we'll get with engineering, public works, planning, and we'll all bring this to our attention and okay. get get this on our radar. Yeah, cool. and some of it. That's a, just a little note. Appropriate that, yeah. Yeah. that fit what we need. Yeah, okay, sure. cool. Without crossing boundaries of non-agenda items being on the agenda yeah. and things like that. Try to be sensitive to that. Thank you for that. But now that we know there was a, a vote in a policy. I forgot about that. I remember yeah. talking about that that's a not, couple that's years a, ago. Legally, yeah. yes, you can do what you just did. Policy-wise, it sounds like, no, you cannot. Okay, so that didn't that. happen, everyone. Anybody who's listening. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else for the good of the order here, the good of the city? I don't see anything. So our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, July 1 at 6 p.m. Uh, right here at the same location. Hope to see all of your smiling faces here again. Um, we'll not see mine, but someone will be here. Ah, well, we'll miss you terribly. And uh, thanks for all you do for us, by the way. Thank you. And thank you guys for putting together a really good presentation, letting us know what's going on. And we really appreciate that. And I know it's a lot of effort. So thank you on our behalf. Thanks. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, well.